Picture this, your heart begins to pound, your breathing becomes shallow, your muscles tense, you suddenly feel dizzy and nauseous, your mind races with worry. Inside, your system floods with cortisol and adrenaline. No matter how hard you try, you can't seem to get back in the game. Fear has taken control. And that's when it happens, right there under the Friday night lights. You drop the game winning touchdown. The feeling of fear quickly turns into embarrassment, then to disappointment, and then to shame. You had the opportunity to be the best. Instead, you perform at your worst. Now, picture that same feeling, that same fear gripping your body, that same feeling of disappointment. But imagine it's happening in the bedroom. And instead of dropping the game-winning touchdown, you're struggling with premature ejaculation, issue with sexual arousal, poor lubrication, disinterest, trouble getting or difficulty maintaining an erection. I'm talking about performance anxiety, the number one most reported social fear. See, when we think of things like performance anxiety, we think of stage fright or trouble catching the game-winning touchdown. Things where an individual feels that they may be exposed to possible judgment from others, where the shame may trigger their ego. But performance anxiety can occur in any situation, especially when an individual feels that they'll be treated. But performance anxiety can occur in any situation, especially when an individual feels that they'll be exposed to possible judgment from others, which makes a vulnerable situation like sex one of the most vulnerable places where performance anxiety can occur. Especially if we continue to treat sex like we do championship football games, as if it were a performance, when you have the opportunity to be the best, but you're performing at your worst. This ego-driven competition, best versus worst, is embedded into our society everywhere, isn't it? We've learned to associate accomplishment with acceptance. We feel that we need to be the best in order to be respected, in order to be loved, in order to be seen. Think about it. In society, there's a right way and a wrong way for our bodies to look. On social media, did she like my post? Did he unlike it? Did she follow? Did he unfollow? In the military, you're either strong or you're weak. Winning the war or losing the battle. Even when I was on The Bachelorette, trying to find love quickly turned into a battle of who was the best. Either get a rose pinned to my chest or send home looking my wounds in a limo. And there's a competition for everything, for masculinity, for femininity, for my blackness, for entrepreneurship, for televised networks, to all levels of corporate America and everything in between, and the nooks and crannies, the things that we haven't even spoke about. Nobody wants to lose. The potential for shame triggers the ego, and the ego then triggers more shame. Dropping that game-winning touchdown under the Friday night lights, that was me. I'll never forget it was on the left-hand side. And struggling to get an erection on and off for years because of my mental health. And then the shame and silence that I had only made it worse. That was me too. Having those conversations in the mirror, I'll never forget it. When it first happened at the age of 18, I didn't know what to say. I couldn't talk to my homies about it. What, what would they say? Would they say that they've been through the same things? 
or they judge and ridicule me. Back then, we were all just trying to be the best, trying to be the man, whatever the hell that means. And my girlfriend, I couldn't talk to her about it at the time. I wanted her to know and believe that I had the potential to be the best. But it happened so often, she started beginning to think that it was her when I just thought that it was me. The ego that I had and the shame that I felt only distanced the gap between us even more. And my family, I couldn't talk to them about it either. I grew up in a house full of beautiful women. I just wanted to be the man. And my father, he too, wanted to be the man. Be strong, be silent. Even the urologist, the specialized doctor that I visited, were off any signs of mental health. He simply said everything was in proper working order and that the issue had something to do with my good morals, which just made sex feel like something I shouldn't be doing in the first place, despite what a beautiful and natural feeling it is for consenting adults. I just kept trying to overcome my fear and anxiety alone, be stoic, be brave, avoid shame, protect my ego. I thought that's what being the best was all about. But the more I tried to be the best, the less I talked, the worse I performed. What I didn't know at the time was that heightened anxiety and adrenaline fueled by shame and silence only constricts and makes it that much harder for the blood to flow into the penis, making it impossible to achieve an erection. It became this cycle of social, emotional, and physical effects, all stemming from my mental health, which ran much deeper than I ever would have thought. It took dedicated personal research, years of personal growth, and many vulnerable conversations to train my ego out of believing that it was my fault. And now I laugh thinking that I was the only one that was even going through it. Recently, I became certified as a sex coach, which allows me to share tips and advice with anyone who wants to know new and exciting ways about sexology and how to make the bedroom and other areas a more pleasurable experience. It also allows me to use my personal it also allows me to use my personal experiences to help those who are dealing with sexual issues and dysfunctions as well, to know that you are not alone. Because the truth is, performance anxiety and other sexual-related dysfunctions affect up to 52% of men and up to 63% of women over the age of 18 in the U.S. alone. With some rough, fuzzy math, that means that up to 141 million Americans will suffer with one or more of these sexual dysfunctions at least once in their lifetime. I am not alone. You are not alone. It may look different for you than it did for me, but for all of us, it feels the same. As if you're in a stadium full of people that just witnessed you drop the game-winning touchdown. See, when we associate accomplishment with acceptance, the ego tricks us into thinking that we need to be the best in order to be loved. It can lead to overwhelming fear of judgment and self-protection that could sabotage our ability to perform. Whether we're on stage playing a championship football game or simply trying to make love. See, that's the danger with trying to be the best when the world is deeply in need of better. Best thrives on unworthiness. Better thrives on possibility. Best thrives on competition. Better thrives on teammates. Best stays silent. Better learns to communicate. Sex is not this performance. Sex is a conversation. 
It's everything that exists in between the space between you and I. And we have the choice to create more space or to make more pleasure. Here's a few ideas that I share with my sex coaching clients. First, slow down. Impatience creates anxiety inside the body, which works against you. Patience allows you to breathe. It's one of my favorite recommendations as a coach. It allows us to drop out of our head and into our body. Sensual touch is another wonderful activity. Oftentimes, there's so many parts of the human body that go left unexplored because we feel like we only got two options. But practicing non-expectancy is a wonderful way to connect and get much deeper, much richer, pleasurable connection. And while we often think that sex toys are just used for self-gratification tools, there are lots of toy options out there that can be incorporated into partner sex as well. And here's a groundbreaking one. Share how you feel. And I know that may not come easy for you all, but here's a hint, it never does. So what I tell my clients and I'll tell you, you and your partner, go take a walk. Think of an easy hike. It's open, you're out in nature, it's beautiful. You're together, but you don't necessarily have to look at each other in your eyes. My clients have mentioned that they love this exercise because it takes the pressure off of sharing with someone that you love. Talk about the things that really matter, the things that really eat at us, fear, grief, shame. These self-limiting beliefs, the voices that are in our head. Don't be shy, talk about this stuff. It's happening to everyone. And yes, even performance anxiety. Fear is very powerful, yes, but it's also universal. It has the power to divide us if held in silence, but unite us if held in conversation. I recently started learning Spanish because I wanted to better communicate and converse with more people. And there's this beautiful saying, si a lo que sea, hablimos de ello. That's Spanish for whatever it is, let's talk about it. When we stop trying to be the best, sex actually gets better. Because in between the best and worst is you and me and all of us. I'm not the best or the worst. I'm better and so are you. These are things that we all experience from time to time. So next time your heart begins to pound, your mind races with worry, the voices continue to get inside of your head, or your ego tells you that there's no other way for you to be loved. I implore you, don't quit the game. Don't go silent. Don't isolate yourself. Don't smile for the cameras while carrying the burden of your private life alone. Just start the conversation. I love you.